Common sense gun control is objective or subjective. If you guys could kind of like play along with what I'm saying, playing devil's advocate here for both sides here. So uh, forgive me if I sound liberal for a minute. <clears throat> So let's say that gun control isn't racist, even though it quite clearly is. I mean, over in Vermont, the demographics as far as ethnicity goes, the population is predominantly white and suffers virtually no crimes across the entire state. But when you enter a state like California that is predominantly minority, like Latino, Hispanic, African American, and so on, or South Side of Chicago's, or the Chicago area itself, which is predominantly black, you have higher rates of crime. So let's say for a second that gun control wasn't racist, and let's just say for, this sec for a second that CDC did do a study on gun control, and they did back in 2013, about gun control and the epidemiology of firearms deaths and the sweeping blow that is affecting all of America. Let's just say for a second that common sense gun control wasn't exactly as subjective as the left wants it to be. Okay, let's just say for a moment maybe we shouldn't sell guns to people who were dishonorably discharged from the military or generally discharged from the military. Let's just say we shouldn't sell guns to people like that. You know, someone who probably slapped or struck an officer and was dishonorably discharged for it. That's an assault. You simply just can't go into a gun store and purchase a gun, right? Let's also say that you can't be arrested for alcoholism or narcotics or striking anyone or some sort of misdemeanor felony. Let's just say you, if you're arrested for any of those, let's say you can't buy a gun. Let's also say that maybe someone who was arrested in the past for something they did or didn't do, or were rumored to have been done something in the past and was on their record and they couldn't buy a gun. Let's say common sense gun control means what it is to at least us, which means bad people shouldn't get guns. But the left spins it as good people who may turn to bad people shouldn't get guns. Now, a little factoid about me. In high school, I was rumored to be a shooter, an actual shooter. And I was 16 at the time, and maybe I was at the age for people to be worried about me to be a shooter. M most shooters were already adults. So I was suspended from school. I was... Okay. I was suspended from school. I was separated from my classmates. Police officers and resource officers were later introduced in the front office of my school because they had to keep an eye on me and make sure I don't do anything stupid. It wasn't all that bad. I actually did um, banter back and forth with some of the police officers like, hey, how's it going? And I actually did talk about firearms with a, a, a few of them. They weren't entirely all that bad. Of course, not a lot of police officers are bad despite what the left tells us of them being racist, bigots, homophobes, transphobes, whatever. But let's just say that I did go on a shooting, and I was caught, and I was arrested, and I was prosecuted duly and accordingly by the full extent of the law. And I was thrown, and the book was thrown at me. Would I have bought a gun afterwards? The left, Democrats, liberals, socialists, and communists, Marxists, and Leninists, We'll say, I have still a chance of purchasing a firearm even if I was arrested for something I did. They'll say that. And then they'll have a platform that says something along the lines of, we need to close the gun show loophole even though there is no loophole. And let's just take a talking point that most liberals have saying that even 16 year olds can go out to buy a gun even though there's only been one news story of a 13 year old purchasing a youth rifle. A youth purchasing a youth rifle. And it probably was a private dealer and the private dealer just looked at the kid's ID, looked at the money, 
looked the kid up and down and was, well, what could you do with a youth rifle? And this was a culmination of events that kind of prompted me to be a good gun owner. Not to do crimes, not to do anything stupid, not to drink, not to smoke, not to drive while intoxicated, not to raise my voice at anyone, seeing as how even that could strip me of my firearms rights, and above all else, to be a patient and responsible person. Story time. A long time ago, I wasn't of the age to purchase a firearm. See, I was born somewhere in the 90s, and this was 2012-ish. Let's say it was 2012. And it was turning 2013. It was kind of like a Christmas holiday sort of thing for my school. And Sandy Hook just happened. There are still some details of Sandy Hook that I still didn't know about. Like, what weapons did this guy use? Who was this guy? What mental conditions or pre- conditions did he have prior to the shooting and what happened to him what happened to the kids how many people died where was it how did it happen was there a gun free zone was it a school or a mall or a uh, police station i didn't know these details but then one of my sped teachers special education teachers because i was special <laughs> asked me if i had heard about the newtown massacre and i said only bits and pieces. I still don't know the whole details. And she asked me what I thought about it. And I said again, well, I still don't know the details. Uh, you'll have to get back to me when I know the details. Now, the, one of the first details I got was instead of this being treated as a tragedy and government assistant going to uh, help these people who were affected by these tragedies, there was government aid going into stripping people of their rights because the, because the one bad person did something wrong. Now in common sense, you don't punish the majority because of someone in the minority did. You just don't do that. We don't punish all black people just for what a few black people did. We don't punish all of Hispanics and deport all the Hispanics for what a few Hispanics did by crossing the border illegally. We don't punish all of Asians for Pearl Harbor. We don't punish all of Muslims for what a few do, or what a few radicals do. We don't punish every single person within that class for what a few people have done. That's unfair, unjust, and it's a douchey thing to do. It's a horrible thing to do to a few people, or the majority, because of what a few people have done. Now, this didn't prompt me to be a gun owner. None of these things prompted me to be a gun owner just yet. By then, I already had a rifle. Before my mother passed away, she bought me a Ruger 10-22 youth rifle. It wasn't a 5.56, it wasn't a 308 or 30 out 6 or 12 gauge. It, it, it was a youth rifle. It was a semi-automatic 22, 22 LR. You know, something I can use, something I can get used to, something I can learn how to strip down, clean, whatever, you know, something simple. So by then, I was already learning how to use a weapon, so therefore I wasn't totally stupid on the matter of how to use a weapon, as most people are when they go to these protests. But what prompted me to want to purchase an AR-15 was Piers Morgan and his little uh, banter and debates and bickering and bitching when he calls people uh, unbelievably stupid. Or when he uh, says something along the lines of, you're unreasonable, you're absurd, your thinking is, you're an unbelievably unsafe man, that sort of thing. This wasn't the events that prompted me to be a gun owner, even though I was extremely concerned of what a British man was saying about our gun laws. Even then, I knew that England didn't have guns. I was 17, 16 at the time, and even then, I knew that England didn't have the Second Amendment, and they didn't have a privately armed citizenry so if they were invaded they'd be fucking screwed right this didn't this still didn't prompt me to be a gun owner and by the time i was 18 the first weapon i bought wasn't an ar-15 it was a bolt action rifle something still simple something i could train up on something i can use something i can learn kind of like a training rifle it was a 30 out six though i still have it 
But none of this still prompted me to be a gun owner. Granted, I was going to be a hunter if I continued to use a bolt action rifle. However, what prompted me to be a gun owner for an AR-15 and why I now have two, one I bought and one I built, is what I was hearing that was deeply concerning to me. What was deeply concerning to me was that everyone was talking about banning one specific rifle. People weren't planning on banning the Scar L, the Bushmaster Masada, or the Magpul, Magpul Masada. They weren't planning on banning AK pattern rifles. They weren't banning uh, FNs or uh, ACRs or SCARs. They weren't planning on banning any other 556, 308 pattern rifle. They were just planning on banning one rifle. And this was deeply concerning to me because I'm an American citizen. If I had the right to own something, I should, right? Like if I want a car, I should have a car with the proper license and registration and insurance for it, right? If I wanted an apartment, should I have an apartment to live on my own with a few roommates maybe? Yeah, I probably should. So given that I could have these things on my own and I could be responsible with these things, why shouldn't I have one type of rifle? Seriously. And to this day, I have two AR-15s, one bought, one built, a shotgun 12 gauge that a family member bought for me for my birthday, a bolt action rifle I bought, and an AK pattern rifle, an AKM, a Wasser 1063 that I sold so I can build an AR upper. It was another weapon I built but sold. But these events between people thinking I would be a shooter prompted me to be a responsible gun owner if the time came that I bought a gun. And when Sandy Hook happened, I wanted to know more details about the Second Amendment and why it was important. And when it came to Piers Morgan, wanting to talk about banning AR-15s, like let's just get rid of one rifle, seeing as how it's the most commonly used, preferred weapon to mass shooters, we know that's not true now, it's pistols. And with the assault weapons bans coming over in the last several years, and people saying that the AR-15 is the most commonly, commonly used weapon in mass shootings, that's just simply not true, it's pistols. So with all this in mind, this prompted me to be a responsible gun owner, that if I were to purchase a weapon, I would have to know how to use it, how to operate it, how to clean it, how to strip it down, how to maintain it, how to load it, and how to shoot it, meaning that I don't do something stupid and shoot the gun by the hip, and that if I'm going to be carrying a weapon, at least the one thing I would need is a sling. And if I'm going to be shooting the weapon accurately, I would at least need an optic. And if I'm going to be using a weapon for home defense, I would at least need a light in case some bad guy came in at night and I had to use the rifle. This all prompted me to be a responsible gun owner, but so many people are still talking about, you know, well, we should still ban the Second Amendment. We should repeal it because there are so many shootings. The AR-15 has been around since the 50s and 60s. The AK-47 has been around a little bit longer, but AK pattern rifles have been around as long as the AR-15 has. These shootings go back to the Beltway snipers when they were using a Bushmaster XM-15 E2S with an EOTech and a bipod on it. They only go back about 15 years. These shootings only go back about 15 years, and even then, most shootings are done with pistols, meaning the Meaning that if you just ban one type of weapon, it's still not going to solve the problem of shootings. You're still going to have shootings with handguns. If you really want to talk about the biggest killer as far as firearms go, let's talk about handguns. But if you want to talk about the biggest killer in America itself, why don't you talk about medical malpractice? Should we ban doctors? How about car accidents and teens with phones? Should we ban phones up to a certain age? Should we ban cars to a higher age until someone is legally considered an adult? And then people are talking about raising the age of uh, owning a firearm from 18 to 21. Should we also consider raising the age of military enlistment from 18 to 21? These are things to consider, but you, the left, not you guys, you guys totally agree with me on this because you guys 
uh, haven't disagreed with me. And whenever you have, <laughs> it was a joke. I can take a joke. I know it was a joke. But these are all things to consider. If you're talking about having security, let's talk about bulletproof walls, bulletproof backpacks, bulletproof windows, bulletproof cars, school resource officers, school resource security, private security, everywhere. We have them at banks, we have them at hospitals, and we have them pretty much everywhere else but at schools. If you care so much for schools, let's talk about arming school resource officers there, providing the optimal security, metal detectors, clear backpacks, removing the classroom uh, hallway uh, school lockers. Let's talk about removing all those. But you guys don't want to talk about that. The liberals, the left, the Democrats, they don't want to talk about that because they'll call us, oh, you're insane, you're absurd, you're paranoid, you're insecure. No, we're really thinking. We're trying to come up with solutions to a problem, but the only problem is, is the liberals, the left, the Democrats, they don't want to accept these. They don't want to talk about these. You guys, the liberals, the left, don't want to hear about it. You guys are virtually insane. Anyways, that's about it. This was a pretty long video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Stay safe and carry on, patriots.